Hello, this is Kai from The Bunny Nest, and today I want to show you how I made this cute little ATC. AT ATC stands for Artist Trading Card, and it is two and a half inches across by three and a half inches long. Let me show you some of the products we'll be using today. Um, I'm going to start with a watercolor paper. This is just a Canson XL watercolor. I believe it's a hundred pound stock. I have a one and a quarter inch circle from a old gel print that I have left and I just cut it in half. Some bits of book paper. I'll be using two colors of Cine oil pastels. The red is 220 and the green is 46. I'll be using Daler and Rowney F and FW acrylic inks. This is sap green and this one is crimson. We'll be using VersaFine onyx black to stamp in and the stamp I'll be using will be this one. It's from Tailored Expressions. This set is called Sketchbook Florals. I'll also be using um, some Tim Holtz Ideology Clipping Sticker Book. Those are my go-to. I'll be using two Micron pens, a .05 in dark green and a .01 in black. My skinny little baby palette knife, a black and white Posca paint pen, just a craft, plain old simple paintbrush, a little bit of water here on the side, to glue everything together, I use gel mat. And then I also use some titanium white golden acrylic heavy body because it will hold the texture. So let's get started. The reason that I started doing these little ATCs was because I saw a lot of colors in lots of places. Different artists were doing um, really unique com uh, combinations of colors and I wanted to try them out in a format that wouldn't commit me to a large space or cost me a lot of um, money in resources. So I just wanted to have something simple to work with. Once these color schemes, these um, test runs with the ATCs, if I like them, then they may find their way into my larger journal as an abstract. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down these uh, pieces of text. And it really um, doesn't matter. I'm using gel medium, and this is a silicon spat, uh, not a spatula silicon brush and I like it for using uh, my for doing my gluing because it spreads very well and it's very easy to clean I don't have to worry I can just wipe it off on a piece of towel so let me set this up here so you can see it so you can see what we're aiming for here Okay. The other thing is you can really push all the extra out of your way. And I've used a lot of different things for applying glue. This, this for me works best. Keeps me from grabbing tools out of the kitchen. All right. Well, I put that away too quickly. Go 
ahead and put these on. And there's really nothing that tricky or special. I mean, if you try to redo this, you know, do this project yourself, you'll find that you have your own way of doing it. And uh, it'll be just as good as anybody else's. You do you. All right. So, make sure that's going to stay. All right. Now I'm going to take the heavy body acrylic paint. And I put these covers on my jars just because it's winter especially. Um, everything seems to just dry out so easily these days. We had the big storm come through. And um, it's kind of funny to watch the bunnies try to clean their face. <laughs> and they their fur won't come off of their, their hands. And so then they start flipping their hands and they look at me like, what? Make it stop. All right. So that's just to get some texture down. I'm just going to take this. Oh, that's good. Just gives us more texture. It's all right. Let's dry it a little bit. It helps to dry it from the back side too. That'll help your card flatten back out. You can see it relax there. Okay. Okay, so now this is dry up here. I'm going to go ahead and work on this. I kind of like these to be sketchy. Nothing has to be perfect. I do you want to kind of soften this texture here? Just a little. So this is just a little um, acrylic paint in a tube for those of you who haven't used it. It's wonderful, just wonderful stuff. You do want to make sure that any glue or paint that you have is thoroughly dried before you bring your microns into it because they will ruin a nib in a heartbeat. I have plenty of dead microns and I tell you, you know, you, you put them over here on the side and you pray for them. 
Ah, and they never come back to life. That's all right. I can use them later to kind of write in, um, like sometimes I like to scribble into the heavy body gesso or heavy body paint like I have here. It gives another texture to your project. And these are buttery and smooth. And if you have access to a, a good um, arts and crafts supply, I mean not arts and crafts, a good uh, artist supply store like Dick Blick's, um, I think Jerry's Artorama, there's some others out there. Um, they will have open stock that you can just pick out a few colors if you want to give them a try. Oh look, a bunny here. wonder how that got there. Now, FW Acrylics, it's a liquid ink that's made with acrylic paint. You can use this in a dip pen, paintbrush. Um, I think it shows on the label some other things like a refillable marker or a refillable um, executive type dip pen, uh, fountain pen, that's what I'm trying to say, or you can use it in an airbrush system. But I haven't tried those. I only use it with my dip pen and my paint brushes right now. So if you want to do that, um, I'll let you do that on your own. I'd hate to get somebody's prize possession messed up. And this is why I use watercolor card. These uh, acrylic inks just work so beautifully. And the heavier that you put them, the darker they'll be. And they dry pretty quickly. And you want to stay just loose. You, you don't want to fill in every spare little piece that you have here. I'll link the supplies down below the video, so be sure and check there if you have any questions. And I'm just getting back into doing these videos, and the computer I usually use to edit them on has kind of had, uh, I think, met with a bad fate. So I'm trying to do this just straight through um, YouTube, and they don't offer you a whole lot of options when it comes to editing. So this is the sap green, and I really love this green. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just so where I want green to be right now. And see, these um, little pieces aren't actually drawn in to the stamp. So you can ad-lib. It doesn't really take 
an artist's touch necessarily to add little details like this and I think that just kind of livens it up and really that's all you need for the green and now this this uh, this red is dried down a little go in here and intensify this bottom part a little more Every time you do this, you'll, it'll be different. And that, I think, is part of the magic. All right, so now I want to get really, I don't want it to be too wet, but I, don't, I want it to have color, but not too much color. Just enough. Just go in and touch these edges. Just kiss it. You always want to leave a bit, little bit of white there because it makes your eye really, really happy just to have that little bit. How's that looking? Kind of getting there, aren't we? Okay. Put a cap on everything before I make a mess. Oh, there's one other thing we need. We need a good strong black to make splatters with. This is Sumi ink. S-U-M-I. It does move with water, but it is so black. Get you out of the way. Good splatters make amazing differences in projects. Now, the one thing I didn't do. I prepared this card before I worked on it years ago, it seems like. No. Um, I will take a stack of cards and I will just go and, and glue on the, the uh, text paper. I'll maybe do some random stamping, and these are little bits of, you know, where I cleaned off a stamp that I had used on something else. So the backgrounds are always going to be a little bit different, but you'll see um, it'll work out just fine. So, let's heat this up again. Now, something you might notice, when you heat oil pastels, they are soft and they are like butter, and I don't know if you can see or not, the shimmer, that um, heat tool actually melts the oil pastel, and it lets it um, kind of get even a more smooth surface without having to, to rub it so you don't smear it, if that's the effect you're going for. A lot of times I like it to look smeared, so I will rub my finger across it just to get um, a little bit of a different feel. Now for my edges, I like to take the pad and just rub along the side like that. And you can see that's a little bit wet. So it will smear ever so slightly. And see, that's how you get that texture. Now 
this also um, kind of frames your project too, makes it look more finished. Brings everything together, all the elements on the page, they just kind of lean into one another when you do this. And it's like finger painting. Who doesn't like finger painting? See, that's hard now. So we're getting pretty close. I like a little bit more green, so I'm going to do um, something dangerous. It's always dangerous. my towel here just a little bit damp and then this pen is also a miracle cure make things better all right, so that accentuates the texture that we get on the heavy body acrylic paint that I used. And then I just, I love to just come in and make knots, dots, dots, dots everywhere. It gives a lot of character. It's very soothing too. I love to do this while I'm watching TV or listening to the TV. It also helps if you, it adds value and contrast to areas. So if you feel like something's not dark enough, but you really don't want to go in and add a lot, like a big swath of black paint or ink, just do some dots. Same if you want to lighten up areas. See, I did dots in a completely different way on the first one. And I did some down here too. I think it works well with the black that I used on the edge. And then sometimes you need to come in and just clean up little areas or if you want to make them a little bit stronger. Sometimes if you paint over the lines, the lines will kind of disappear. And these are not projects that you can always put back in a misty and restamp. Although I've certainly done that a lot of times, but I usually plan ahead for it. But on this one, the simple stamping really wasn't that big of an issue. So there you have it. Oh, we got one more little thing. Two more little things. Getting ahead of myself. That, and then we'll get some more of the matte gel medium. And stick down that sentiment. Okay. 
And even though these strips are self-adhesive, I always glue them down just to make sure they don't move on me. little crooked. Bring it up just a hair. It's another good reason to use gel medium. You got a minute before you are stuck with it for life. a tiny little bit of sumi all along the edge right there right there and there you go So I hope this inspires you today. Maybe move out of your comfort zone and try a color palette that you normally wouldn't. And I'd love it if you'd subscribe and like and leave me a comment if there's something that you would really like to see. And maybe it'll show up next week. Thank you.